So you may have read the article re that recently came out talking about how one syndication group got 3,200 multifamily units in Houston foreclosed on. Now, this was a really tragic and terrible event. Um, you know, all, the limited investors all lost their, uh, you know, their equity invested in the deal. And it was really a crappy situation for them and really put a taint on the industry. What I thought I would do in this video is talk about four specific lessons that you as either an active investor or a passive investor can learn and take away from this really, really crappy situation. So we're gonna talk about these lessons right now. What's going on guys? My name is Lior and welcome back to my channel. Now, before I get into the meat and potatoes of the video, two super quick things guys. Number one, if this is your first time on my channel, first of all, welcome. Second of all, make sure you smash that subscribe button for me. I am putting out tons of weekly content all about multifamily and real estate and investing, talk about syndications, burr strategies, raising funds, construction, and everything in between. So if that's the kind of content you're looking for, make sure you subscribe. And number two, guys, if you are someone that is looking to invest in multifamily, you've got some funds sitting, but you don't want to be an active investor, go hit, you know, you don't want to hit the ground running with networking with brokers, finding deals, you know, uh, putting operations teams together. Me and my team get uh, so many calls from people just like you, right, who want to invest in multifamily. So what we do is partner with you guys, you know, and you can invest into some of our real high quality multifamily deals in Boston and all over the country. So if you're interested, hit us up and we will definitely, definitely help you out. So as I said in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the crucial lessons you need to take away from this disaster of a foreclosure, right? Basically what had happened was this, you know, Houston syndication group, uh, you know, raised a bunch of money um, from limited partners, right? That wanted in multifamily exposure and unfortunately, you know, things just went sideways very, very quickly. Um, and within a pretty short time span, um, you know, the syndication group got completely foreclosed on, right? So um, all the limited partners, as I said, lost their equity contributions, even though it's a really tragic event. And I, you know, I just feel so bad for everyone involved, um, on, especially those investors that invested to this deal. There are a couple of key lessons that are really, really important that have come out of this whole situation. So let's get right into it with lesson number one. And lesson number one is it really, really, really matters who you invest with as an operator, right? It is absolutely crucial. As uh, things got uncovered about this front closure, it turned out that this syndication group, you know, really didn't run a very good operation. Uh, you know, there was pictures that came out of some of their apartment complexes, and it looks like they've had a ton of complaints from tenants uh, that who have tried to get the city involved because they've just been deplorable conditions. They haven't invested money into actually fixing and properly maintaining their properties, right? And you know, when you're investing in real estate, you're investing in something very real, right? Something that's real hard. People are living in every day, and you have to be able to run a tight, tight operation in order for you and your investors to realize those returns, right? And it's clear that these folks just like were not doing that. And you know, the other thing I'll say is real estate, unlike other sorts of investments that you may make, right? Like whether it's stocks, bonds, ETFs, right? Whatever it is, you know, real estate is, again, is a very real and hard thing. And you know, numbers on Excel might make more, you know, can certainly tell a story, but at the end of the day, a lot of the returns that come through are derived from true on the ground operational work, right? So really understanding the quality of the group you invest with, maybe try to see how they run their operations, if they have any sort of rep with running, you know, running poor management or anything like that. That is so, so key to making sure your investment is successful. Number two lesson out of this is that floating debt is a very risky proposition. Now, what happened with this particular scenario and, and you know, in Houston was this group locked in their de debt uh, when rates were really low and they got a really attractive rate, right? It was in the mid threes, but they took floating debt. And what has happened is since rates have gone up and now we're in a completely different interest rate environment, you know, their interest rate on their debt shot all the way up to around 8%, right? 
So you can imagine the stark difference of your mortgage payment and debt service of three and a half percent versus eight percent, right? I mean, it's gonna be massive, massive increase, and that definitely put these operators in big trouble, right? So that's why I'm always a big proponent of getting fixed debt, right? I mean, a lot of the times we get either at least three or five uh, year period of fixed debt, but I don't like to take floating debt because you're just taking so, so much exposure to the market. I mean, any fluctuations like this can just absolutely crush your numbers, right? So make sure you pay attention to the debt structure um, because that can really, really have a huge impact on the results. Lesson number three, similar to the debt, is make sure the deal you're investing to is not over leveraged, right? So the, the deal stack on this particular Houston deal, these guys were 80% leveraged on their deal. I mean, that's really, really, really high leverage, right? So when you combine with a really high leverage and now all of a sudden your debt skyrockets up, Again, it's not, it's not hard to see why these guys ran into a bunch of trouble, right? So if you're an investor that's looking to invest passively, right, what I would do is really understand the debt and equity structures and make sure you feel comfortable with the amount of, you know, with the amount of leverage that's being brought to the deal. I mean, you know, leverage is of course great because it helps us amplify returns in real estate, but when, you know, it's, you know, as it's always said, it's a dual edged sword, right? I mean, taking too much of it and then things can go bad that extra leverage can absolutely crush you, which is of course what happened here. So really make sure to evaluate the deal stack, understand how much debt, understand how much equity is being brought to the table so that you really feel comfortable um, with the total deal structure. And finally, lesson number four that you wanna make sure you really understand is you gotta be able to do basic due diligence items, right? Because you know what has, you know, what the articles, what the articles revealed about what happened in this Houston foreclosure is, it also turned out that some of these operators didn't really account for some basics, right? They didn't account for prop, uh, for tax adjustments after they bought the buildings. Um, it looks like they had some insurance miscalculations, right? And this is not something that's like rocket science, right? I mean, insurance, you know, you gotta know your stuff. You gotta be able to talk to the right insurance agents to really understand what your cost is gonna be. Tax adjustments is another thing that if you're a good operator, right, you gotta know. You gotta know that your bill, once you purchase the building, each city does it differently, of course, but you gotta know that there's probably gonna be some sort of reassessment of the building when it's bought um, at, within some sort of time frame um, after the purchase happens, right? I mean, you know, most good operators know that. So if you're an active investor, make sure, of course, you do your due diligence. And same thing as a passive investor, right? I mean, if you're someone that's looking to invest passively, take a look at some of the assumptions that are being uh, written on the Excel sheets, right? Like, it, you know, our basic things like uh, tax adjustments um, being done, ask your operator where the insurance quotes coming from. Are these directly from a source? Um, is this from previous buildings, right? But you really want to make sure you hammer out the basic numbers so that you don't run into this kind of trouble. So hopefully this made sense, guys. Again, I mean, this was a really, really crappy situation that played out. But you know, from every crappy situation, there are a lot of key lessons that come out. So make sure you digest these, make sure you apply these. Again, whether you're an active, you're gonna be an uh, investor, you're gonna be buying yourself or you're passive, make sure you digest these and learn these lessons. So of course, if you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments below.